Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, hopefully I can do this one quickly because I noticed my battery indicator is showing, um, showing it, I'm, I'm gone down to about 20% battery. Uh, and by talking about it, I'm making the situation worse, so I better get on with it. Um, as you know, probably know, if you've seen a lot of my videos, I do do quite a lot of servicing on, on rigger turntables and occasionally get some quite interesting stuff in. And I've had in a very early Planer 2. It's interesting from a couple of points of view. One is, is this one is exactly 40 years old. So I thought I'd, what I'd do is do a, a comparison sort of visually of a 40 year old Planer 2 to the modern Planer 2. And also it's the birth, sort of the birthday of the Planer 2 that it was actually released in 1977 in April. So it's actually, yeah, 45 years old. So I thought it'd be an interesting one to do. And um, hopefully the battery, just trying to, some squinting at my battery indicator, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, hopefully we'll <laughs> manage to do this without without everything going everything going black. So uh, I'll turn the camera around and let's let's have a look. So here we go, two Riga Planer twos, forty years apart. So we've got so this is nineteen eighty two, produced between seventy seven and I'm taking a wild guess at this, but I I'm pretty sure that the because this you'll notice it's got a nice wooden plinth on it, uh, or wooden edging edging to the plinth. I think the wooden version finished about eighty three. So this is quite a late one. So it's an eighty two. It's probably t towards the end of the. Uh, production of the, the wooden plinth versions. After that it went to the more conventional, just um, ordinary black black plinth, like the pl like the plane. The Planer 2 always had that. Uh, but the, for some reason the Planer 2 was slightly fancier. Well, it never, never quite worked that out, but it was slightly, slightly fancier. Um, original comes with the ACOS arm. It's not, not a Riga product, that. It's called a Riga R200, but it's the same arm as a, a Lin, LV, Lin Basic LVV as well. It's the, sa it's the same basic arm can't get parts for this which is a shame because there's a whole host of things I've, I've said this in videos before there's a whole host of things that goes wrong go wrong with these and you can't get the parts now um, the main culprit is the, the actual arm lead which you would have thought would be a simple thing to replace but it's a it's an individual plug on the bottom so you can't unless you botch something underneath you can't really replace it uh, have problems with the head shell connections the anti-skate belt snaps the which can be replaced but never totally it's never totally an ideal Solution partly because the magnets in the in the anti-skate start to fail as well. So um, yeah, it's a shame because it was a good arm actually. It was um, when the RB250 came out. There was there were there was a little clique of people who still preferred the original arm, which I always you always get that to be fair. But it was um, I sort of could see where they were coming. It was a little bit more light and bright sounding the the R200 than the the RB250. But um, I think. It was a bit of coloration going on and people quite like the coloration but when you get used to an rb250 and then go back it sounds a bit rough and ready so i could sort of see where they were coming from but uh, but generally yeah um so yes yeah, so you're struggling a little bit if, if, if you've got one of these and it's faulty you kind of just have to replace the arm it's uh, i mean i've got loads of scrap arms if you need any parts for r200s give me a call because i've got loads of scrap arms um, same glass platter underneath um exactly the same glass platter pretty much same for all the resin Sub platter. I think the, the the brass part at the bottom of the bearing is slightly different on the modern ones, but the, the, the parts are still interchangeable. This is on an original. You see the um, not the resin pulley. Um, these are still on the two two forty volt motor, which continued right through till about two thousand. I think the, the the mains motor. And that's the Prematec motor that had a guy in comments, and I don't read comments nowadays, partly for this reason. But the guy in comments said. Uh, the problem with Riga's is they use that 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 rubbish Prometec motor, which is the same motor that Lynn used in the Sun deck, Pink Triangle used in the Exports and the PT2s and all those sort of decks. Loads of people have used it because it, they, they never fail. It's absolutely indestructible, the Prometec motor. Uh, so I don't know what, I'd, some, some, something about it had upset him. Not quite sure what. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, rubber mat. Now, I'm struggling on this one because I would have said that the Riga always used, apart from the original Riga planer, which had an aluminium platter, I would have said that Riga's always used a, a felt mat. And when this came in, I thought, oh, we bought an after aftermarket mat for it. But actually, now I'm looking at it, I kind of remember it. So I think for a short time, they did come with a rubber mat. I might be put straight in comments on that one, but I, I, yeah, that's just my memory failing. I can't remember. Yeah, I've got memories of it, but I just, yeah, I can't remember at what point they stopped using that. Um, obviously, the, the, the modern one, exactly the same glass platter with nice finger marks there. Look at that. Um, for not the resin sub platter, now on an aluminium pulley, 24 volt motor, 
which is quieter and gives it a lot more torque. Um, so better sort of dynamics and everything off the, the, the new one. Uh, RB2 20 tone arm, uh, which is sort of a, a modern version of the old RB250, which is now a three point mount. You can just about make out it's the same cut out for the hole, but now three point mount. Um, I mean, you can, if the, the arm fails on, a, on an original two, you can put that, that toe on it. We just need to drill three little pilot holes and it fits, fits fine. So that's it really. Oh, the other thing is of uh, the, the much loved by some people smoked lid with a nice green badging on it. Um, a good few years ago, they went to, to clear lid uh, with a sort of simpler badge on there with the, on that. But uh, yeah, it's a good long, it's quite a long time since they went to clear lid and people, people still sort of uh, sort of going a bit about miss, missing the smoke lid, but yeah, I don't know, I think I've sort of got used to the clear lid now, and I think I, think I kind of prefer it. Sonically, there's not as much in it as you would expect. I think that the modern version sounds a lot more upbeat and clear, um, but the, the early versions have got a sort of a charm about them. I think the only danger is, I think this one is a good one. It's a really good one. I don't think, I was looking at the main, the main bearing on this, and it's barely showing any signs of wear. Um, just as <laughs> just as a comparison, I've got a, a deck downstairs with one of these fancy aftermarket um, bearing hubs made by, I can't remember who, which one it is, but it's one of the really fancy looking ones, which are quite an expensive item. The guy's had it six months and the wear on it is considerable. It looks, it's got way more wear than this has at 40 years old, um, which is a bit concerning to be honest. Um, but yeah, I've seen quite a few of these aftermarket hubs and they're always the same, they're always worn out. Anyway, that's, that's going off into a completely different subject. But yeah, um, hardly anywhere on this. So I've had a good listen to this and it's surprising how good it is actually. But I've, I've heard later ones where the toe and arm bearings are loose and everything's, you know, the, the internal wiring, the arm seems to be, seems to be breaking down. And they, they, don't, they, they, they don't have the same clarity this has. So it's, it's obviously, the, the early deck was, a, it was a great deck. You can see how it got its reputation to be fair. Really good. So, um, but this is, like I say, this is a rarity. So almost like a little time capsule deck, this one. Uh, a few knocks on it, which is a bit of a shame, but I mean, that probably I was going to perhaps go around it with a bit of a uh, bit of tea coil and just smarten it up a little bit. But um, yeah, interesting one. So um, 40 years apart. I'll just turn the camera around. Right, yeah, so I hope you like that one. Um, I'm just watching my battery because we're down to 3%. So if it seems a little bit rushed, um, that's why. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, like I say, interesting comparison between the two. Uh, hopefully, I was, I was, I'm trying to get hold of an original Riga Planet because that's an interesting deck. Uh, very, very different again, in, in uh, sort of initially. But actually, when you look at it, it's kind of the same, kind of the same structure in, underneath. But uh, that's for a future video, I should think. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like. We're about four thousand two hundred subscribers at the moment. Is that brilliant? It's just, it's, a fun, it's fantastic. I just, yeah, never expected that. But anyway, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.